Hey, I'm sitting here thinking about truth and telling the truth. And Lord knows I, that that's come up in my cards um, quite a bit. And um, really, really important at this time because it's all about the truth. And I'm, it made me think about a quote. Many of you know that I'm a New Thought um, student um, and prayer practitioner. And I've always liked the, the, the New Thought people uh, or people of that who speak in the general same framework like Neville Goddard or Dr. Joseph Murphy. But I'm um, also, there are many others of Unity, um, Charles Fillmore, and uh, Eric Butterworth, one of my favorites, Sally Taylor, one of my favorites. But Ernest Holmes, the sort of organizer of what came to be called the science of mind, says a quote that I'm thinking about today and I want to highlight sort of the, in this ramble. And that is, your word is the law unto the thing for which it is spoken. And what you know from those words is just how much power is in the spoken word and in one's thoughts for shaping reality. And for so long, the system and the society that we live and move through in our world and that has been passed along to us is built on a reality or so-called reality that I like to say that is built on a foundation of untruth. And it looks like to us because we were handed this so-called reality that this is the world, this is the real world. But when you begin to understand and awaken and know that the foundation that has been set down is built on rocky sand, you know, I mean, this, this next year or, or two will be like the tower card in the tarot. It's all going to come crumbling down and we're all going to see things that maybe we took for granted to be truth, that we understood that... Um, you know, how things really work. We've already begun to see some of that with the information that comes out now about all the people that took the juke joint jab and how um, the problems coming up now seeping out because mainstream so-called media is still trying to, you know, shut everything down or just trying to shape the information that comes out. Most people now are quite aware that they get lies from that you know, so-called media. And so they're the wiser and more and more people are discovering it. Well, not just that, not in the invent of the entity and the juke joint jab, but also in many aspects of the way our whole world actually runs are going to be coming up for revelations of truth. And this is why I think I loved that interview that Shannon Sharp did from Club Shay Shay with Cat Williams, because one of the most powerful things that he said to me, in my opinion, was that when he was talking about a some somebody earlier, and people were asking him, why are you coming down on a black comedian like that or a black man like that? I don't know who he was talking to at the time but before this interview. He said, race is not the line where things are drawn. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't care nothing about the other side, period. And to me, that was probably the most powerful thing. He went on further to say that, you know, um, those people that are in that system and doing all that stuff, you know, are under sort of, I think he used the word Satan, Satan's thumb, and they can't create, which is true. They, they cannot create, so they imitate. And, you know, the I, I wish I had taken a moment, if I really known I was going to talk about this, to copy, the, to get that down, because I wrote it down. But it was just something to the degree that he can't create for his followers. 
So at any rate, this is the point. I know I've been saying for a couple, two, three years now that all the things are going to be brought into the light of day. All the lies must be exposed. All the truth must be um, exposed. And you can just see, if you just look around, there is no coincidence the things that are happening here. It's as if it's on a rhythm. It's on a timeline. I was at, you know, I was noticing how suddenly we're hearing all this, these stories about all the things going on in the so-called royal family of England. You know, this one is sick with this. This one had surgery with this. This one couldn't go to a funeral. And they're all, everything seems to be exploding somehow from within. The why of it is, on the one hand, it may be the idea they're trying to lead us into a one world government and there's no need for presidents and royalty uh, if that's the case. But the other thing is you have to wonder, is this, is it, it's, a, it's the time for comeuppance. And so you see these people uh, leaving their posts and they're going to run again for political office and whatnot in the U.S., all these people getting rid of their money. Something big is coming. And it, you should be able to feel it and sense it, even if you can't identify it. And it has to be with the lies that have really, the whole thing has been based on bubbling to the surface for the light to shine on it, for us to see. And when that light shines and we can see, first of all, we'll feel betrayed. I mean, some of us are already aware, so we've been through that. But we'll feel betrayed and we'll wonder how we got that far. And some people will not be able to make it and they will have to let go of this reality in a way that takes it out of their control. And others may decide it's just their time to cross over now in various and sundry ways. But the thing about it is, is that there, some of us came for this moment. Some of us came to witness darkness coming to light. You know, to have the exposure of just how much humanity has been betrayed and in so many ways. And another quote that I wrote down that Cat Williams said was, you know, well, I don't want to quote all of it, but I'll say this much. It's up for all of them. And he's referring to the people in his world, the entertainment and all that. But really, he's speaking, in my opinion, for all of the people involved in maintaining, perpetuating, upholding, and strengthening that dark system. He said, all lies will be exposed. That's all. And anyone who takes that the wrong way knows why they take it the wrong way. The truth is the light. And it's just an exciting thing for me. I feel like it is a cosign for me and it makes me know, you know, He's one of my people in terms of ideology and looking at the world a certain kind of way because he sees what is true. And so it doesn't really matter. And all the people who are profiling and styling and trying to be somebody based on a false, you know, a way of looking at life so that, you know, you might have in Europe royalty, but in the U.S. you've got Hollywood royalty or so-called royalty, which is completely backwards, upside down, deviant and everything. So all of that must be exposed. And we're hearing some of that now. Heard a whole lot of stuff about the one that used to be called Puff Daddy. I don't know. I just don't like to mention the, their names um, because some of the things that you know that go on there are, you know, you can just feel like, a, you know, slime over you when you tap into that energy. And so let it be, you know, let there be light. That's what I say. And so what I want to say, and that's not just entertainment, that's just not Hollywood and, and all of that. It's in every aspect. It's, it's including in the political system. You know, I watch a lot of haranguing between political parties in the United States. And I watch the dirty dealings, you know, that you have candidates running that can't get up on, uh, you know, get up a ground to run on because those who are trying to control and manipulate things don't want to do the right thing. How do you expect wickedness to do the right thing? So you have somebody like Robert Kennedy Jr. having to leave 
and become a different political party because of the dirty dealings. Or you have somebody like Marianne Williamson, one of my spiritual sheroes, having to just leave because she's not able to get any ground because the system that they're trying to keep in place, headed by a demented old man right now, a demented old man right now, is manipulating everything. So, and I'm not saying there's any better on the other side. You know, it's just for me, and you heard me say it, everything must change. And that includes the system. So it isn't about a new party getting in the office and another one doing, you know, what the other one didn't do, because it's built on shoddy ground and it's built on untruth. And so no matter who gets in there, you if you don't eradicate the system itself and rebuild, I'm not saying just replace with people, you will have the potential same problems. And I think this this what this time is all about. I think that's what we're here to do. And that's what's going to happen. It's all going to fall apart. It's all going to crumble because you cannot maintain it in the light of truth. You cannot maintain. Darkness can only prevail for so long. And so what I want to say to people is that now is the time, instead of looking for all the differences of what this individual did, you know, did you see what he did and did you see what she did? It's not along the race line. It's not along the the he versus she line. It's not along the class line. It's not along the national line. It's not along the political line. It's not along the, you know, It's not all about the us and the them. It's about the unity. And if we cannot somehow figure out how to find unity, even in our, you know, different opposing ideologies and viewpoint, well, then we're going to have a real serious problem. We're going to be lost. It's about working together and supporting each other's efforts for humanity so that people have a place to live, have food to eat, have good health and access to real health care, not this false big system, um, multinational drug corporation type, so-called health and welfare, because that ain't getting it. And so we need to, you know, come away from the corners that we have established of us and them. And it hopefully is going to become more and more clear about why we need to do that. Because at the end of the day, while you're you know pointing a finger and we're taking our positions and our sides about what that other side is doing, the, the, the people who have the strings are just laughing. You know, as long as I can keep these people fighting about color or fighting about religion and all of these things, you know, some things take a back seat. And this reminds me again, and I'm going to mention my uncle's quote again, because to me, it's along the same vein. There's, Cat Williams said, race is not the dividing line. It's God's side and the other side. And we don't want anything to do with the other side. My uncle Joe Lewis, and I always say, former heavyweight boxing champion, 1937 to 1949 that he held that title for 12 years. I'm mighty proud. We are mighty proud. But one thing that he said in the highlight of his heyday was that we were going to win because we're on God's side, not the other way around. And this is part of understanding who can say what the truth is. People like to think they've got the truth, right? You know, that party is wrong. Those people are wrong because they've done that. I know I'm speaking the truth. It's one of the things the scriptures does tell us, and they're problematic because we're going to see in the light of day, we're going to learn things about that as well. But one thing it says is God is not partial, meaning that God doesn't take a side. God is. And so when my uncle says, we're on God's side, it means that we are aligning ourselves with truth. We are aligning ourselves with righteousness. We are aligning ourselves with love and with peace and with harmony. 
It's not the other way around. We have made God in our own image, so we think it's a man sitting somewhere who's pointing a finger. It doesn't work like that. And that's another subject for another time because God is mind. God is consciousness. But as I said, the idea is just to bring it on a level where many people have been inculcated to believe. And that is they've been inculcated to believe in the, what they call the holy scriptures. There are some good things in it. But there are lots of problems, and those will too come to the light over these next few years or maybe even the next couple. The point of it is truth is the, is the cry that we all need to unify around. We need to work together and support one another's efforts to do something that is true in moving forward humanity. We must focus on the practical things that matter, not the difference between us as colors or the difference between us as political parties and what they're doing and how we got it right, but rather things that will help us lay a strong foundation that will help us focus on the day-to-day -day living so that more of us may thrive and we're not divided and decide who's deserving. If that, you know, if the scriptures say that God doesn't do that, why, who do you think you are that you do it? So we must find a way to, to come together and be supportive of each other's efforts for the whole of humanity, not for individual idealized positions like race or so-called gender uh, divisions. Because at the end of the day, the future is potentially extremely bright for those of us who are moving in that direction. The future is waiting to birth us new abundance, new joy, new beginnings, much more positivity, much more vitality. But we must do our part, which was also what my uncle said. So your word is the law unto the thing for which it is spoken. And if you are speaking against others based on artificial man-made divisions, you are speaking that into further permanence. This is the time to look at the things that don't divide us, but rather bring us together our humanity. That's the one thing that I'm pretty clear about. You cannot afford to continue the naming, blaming game. Take action, practical things that you can do in your neck of the woods, in your world to bring people together. Do that. And then you work on a basis that doesn't appeal to fighting the system, fighting, you know, fighting all of that because you're just putting energy into something that the universe is about to help us see is going to crumble. It can help but crumble as it is exposed. It can exist in the light. It must crumble. So in the meanwhile, what are you doing to line up plan B and C and D so you can be ready to roll in with the new prescriptions for when it all does? Because my friends, believe me, it is coming. These systems are going to collapse and fold and we will be in confusion, many people, because we won't have understood how everything that we learned and believed as we, you know, came through and came up in the system could be a lie, could be meant to hurt us, could be meant to subdue us and control us. But that is indeed what we are going to be learning over this next time. This year, as I've said, it's on, meaning lots of things coming in March, in April, in May, and on to through, you know, the so-called election. Who knows where that's going? All I know is that everything must change and it must be built on true foundations for what matters for humanity, not true my opinion is you got to verify my identity. I'm not doing that. I'll verify that you are a human being like me and let us find common ground there. 
But as for the picky, you know, talking about my color and why, you know, this and that and your color, why it's a problem and this and that. I'm not doing that. I'm not talking about myself in piecemeal pieces. Because while I was given this as a as a as a a design, as a decoration, all these wonderful things about who I am, they're not who I am. I'm a child of love. I'm a child of the great one manifesting in this form for the purposes of having an experience to lead me back to my true remembrance of who I am. And it's not about my color and it's not about my gender and it's not about what I got and it's not about what I want to obtain. It's about none of that. It's almost like having that be there as a distraction. So to see if you can find the real purpose or if you're going to just keep playing the game. Hmm. So remember that your word is the law unto which it is spoken, simply meaning what you want to see be the reality in the world. Claim it and name it and move in that way. Don't be careless with your tongue. Something else scripture says, because life and death is in the power of that. So stop pointing fingers at the people who are doing things the way you think they shouldn't be done. What can you do that will be uplifting for everyone besides taking energy away from that system, which is in its decline, you can begin to make more useful um, choices about how to see things, how to do things, how to utilize what's available. And those who are willing to unify with you, let us all move together. And let us know that it doesn't have anything to do with pieces of us and parts of our identity and who we think we are. If you are limiting yourself to your sexuality or your race or your political affiliation or your religion, you are indeed lost. Because at the end of the day, it isn't about any of that. You've been fooled. So... I just have these things in mind. Race is not the line where things are drawn. It's God's side and the other side. We'll win, my uncle said, and we'll do it. And we'll do our part because we're on God's side. And that means that we're aligning ourselves with the highest principles. And they have nothing to do with this petty yun, pick a unish division. It's time for change. It's going to be enough of an upheaval when people are begin to get the realizations of the levels of betrayal, the lies they've been told. The, you know, the ground will be shaky under their feet. And more of us who are aware and know, we know we've been building our stability and learning how to stand in the midst of some rocky roads, you know. One of the shows that I have really you know, I'm in a mixed bag about it because I have my own particular views about, you know, Christianity and stuff. I'm not a Christian, so I don't, you know, I don't come to that. But the stories, some of the stories are so lovely. You know, their kind of beauty at the level of baseline truth because of the love that's there. And I say all that to reference a, a show that I just fell into watching called The Chosen. Haven't been able to see the season four yet because it's beautifully written, beautifully acted, beautifully directed. And it's very, you know, it's, did I say beautifully written? Yes, it's very well done. And it highlights so many things about humanity and getting back to base roots, even as it's telling it behind the story of Jesus Christ, you know? It's more about the baseline levels of humanity for me and what that who created me has given me to understand about how much it values me, just like how much it values you. You don't have time for the pettyish and the picayune and telling people all kind of craziness because they see things differently from you. 
It's time to find the places where you can come together for the sake of humanity. If you want to keep living, if you want to have any kind of life, if you want to have something more equitable, more fair, more lovely. If you want to throw off the shackles and the chains that you might not even know you have right now. But when you begin to realize that's when, like I say, a whole lot of waking up is going to be done. So focus on what's practical, not the things that are critically divisive and meant to tear us apart, because that's part of the system and the way it's operated. Keep them fighting with each other so they can't tell. Even in the earliest times, you know, with the history of slavery, you know, there were more equitable relationships between differing peoples until one day the the, the 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 planters, the rich people, the rich men, right, decided that they needed to foster division. And they could do that by making the servants and the, uh, the white indentured servants and whatnot see themselves as possibly having a possibility of rising into, you know, wealth and power one day because they could, they had that in common, the color. And that they other people could never get there. That's in a way for me where it began, although it began way before that historically. But that's another subject for another time. We must work together and support each other's efforts to move forward and for the greatest good of humanity, not clinging on to our own little desires for making reality be what we want it to be in terms of small-minded ways of seeing. Scriptures say that the Creator says, my ways are not like your ways. There is no way you can get there. We must focus on the practical matters and begin to build a strong foundation at the level of even when things are changing so that we have some kind of ground that we're moving on even as things are being uprooted. Let us do that. Let us understand the wealth that comes from taking care of ourselves and each other and being practical in our movements and not being a victim to all the words and all the things coming at us. And let us embrace positivity and believe that we have a bright future ahead because we do. You might have another future ahead if you think that the so-called authorities have the answers for you, then follow the Pied Piper down the road to the river. But for many of us, we foresee a marvelous tomorrow, but that involves preparation today. So putting all of that together, it's just the importance of speaking truth, speaking things that are positive, speaking things that heal, speaking things that you want to see in your reality, not the things that are going to further divide you, because that's going to get us nowhere. So I hope that this message, you know, it's a ramble and my rambles just come from here and here and here, but I hope it give you gave you some food for thought. I hope you understand the power that you have to speak something into existence. You don't want to be careless and random. You want to know how powerful you are and that you've been given this gift of creation and manifestation by that which made you. And so there is a lot of power if you speak carelessly against yourself, against others, against what's possible for all of us. Flip the script. Remember your word is the law unto which it is spoken. Speak the highest for us all. Do so by finding the ways that we can come together and not in a namby-pamby way, but in a for real. Let's not get to fighting over all these, these petty things. Let's look ahead to moving together as a humanity for the greater good of all of us. All is coming to the light, and I'm so waiting for it, been waiting for it. And I want to be a part, I want you to be there as well. I want us all to be there. We're going to lose some, but I think we're going to gain a whole lot. So thank you for listening. 
And like I said, I, I hope this made some sense to you. And um, let me know your thoughts about it, about this idea. You've got to speak the truth. You can't be careless. You can't hide what you know is righteous because, you know, it may rock the boat. I can't speak against, you know, something a black person did because it'll make us all look bad and it'll make me look like I'm not a real black person. I can't speak against my political party because, um, you know, I can't agree with anything the other party says because then, you know, then I'm not a real whatever. The time for that mess is up. So let me know what you think. You know, it's not about being in this world and maintaining this world, to be sure. It's about the opportunity to be a part of something new that's something better. But it means raising everything to the ground, like the tower says, so we can rebuild anew, but based on something solid and truthful and righteous. So thank you for listening. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. But in the meantime, keep your thoughts high. High is true. Keep your emotions in check. Balanced emotion is true. And align with the truth in you, with the divine in you that has given you the power to speak a word as a law unto which it is spoken. Don't be careless. And I'll see you again soon. But for now, goodbye.